All right. Hi, everyone. Let's take a quick look at, at this guy right here. So find the term independent of x in the expansion of 3x minus 2 over x to the fifth, all to the 11. Okay. So I'm going to apply the, uh, the general term of the binomial expansion equation here to this. So which is t sub k plus 1 equals m choose k x. Now, not to be confused with the x variable you're seeing here. This x refers to the first term to the n minus k, and then y, which is going to refer to the second term here, to the k. Now, at this point, I don't know a whole lot, but I do know that the exponent here is going to be my n. So n is going to be 11. So 11 choose k. Okay, I don't know k, and that really is the point. Um, when I'm trying to look for the, the term, I'm going to find that term number. That's the k value. Okay. Uh, and k is always going to be one less than the actual term value here, but it's the k that I'm looking for. So in this case here, this is going to be 3x to the 11 minus k, remember, n is 11, times negative 2 over x to the fifth uh, to the k. Now, my goal in this is to get the x variable factors together. Okay, I'm not really so concerned about the the coefficients here, but I do got to deal with, make sure I've dealt with those properly. So this is going to be 11 choose k. I'll distribute that exponent to both factors here. So this will be 3 to the 11 minus k, x to the 11 minus k. I will do the same thing over here. Uh, I will keep the negative together with the 2. So this will be negative 2 to the k. Now notice in this case that I'm taking uh, and putting the k outside the brackets. Now that's that's because there's a negative in there that I need to to make sure is is together with that. I didn't worry about it so much over here because the three was positive. It wasn't a big deal. Here I'm going to bring the x to the fifth up to the numerator. Okay. Now you got to remember that rule, and this is this is something that often gets forgotten. Okay, that that's going to become x to the negative five when I bring it up into the numerator to the k. So, my next step is going to be to move the coefficients, okay, the numbers here to the front, and I'm going to move the, the factors that have an x in them to the back. Now, I can do that because order doesn't matter with multiplication. So, I can change the order as much as I want, and this suits me better. And notice that because I've got a power of a power here, I just multiply them together. So this will now be 11 choose k, 3 to the 11 minus k, negative 2 to the k, and this becomes x to the, well, now remember, I'm multiplying two powers together. So I have to add the exponents. And in this case, I've got 11 minus k plus negative 5k. Well, that's just going to be 11 minus 6k. So that's the expression. Okay. Uh, this is going to, this is the general expression. If I know the value of k that I'm interested in, I can find any term I want in the expression. Now, this particular problem is saying find the term independent of x. Well, that's just a fancy way of saying x to the zero. Okay, that's the only way that I can get rid of the, the x factor in any term is if I make the exponent equal to zero. So, right now the exponent is 11 minus 6k. So what I need is I need for this to be equal to 0. So I bring that over, 11 equals 6k, divide, and that is a bizarre result. Okay, k is 11 over 6. Now, if you remember what k is, uh, it's an index. It's a way of helping me determine which, which term in the sequence I'm referring to. Uh, these are meant to be whole numbers. K will, st sorry, k will start at 0 and go up to the value of n, which in this case is 11. But it goes up by natural numbers. So what does this mean? Well, it means there, there is no term independent of x. It means the thing I'm being asked to find simply doesn't exist in this question. And that's an okay solution. If it did exist, what I would do is I would take that k and plug it back into this equation, uh, this expression here, and figure out what all the terms are.